that's been the latest. I'm sure it'll be cooler and sexier than Val Kilmer as well, too. But we're not doing it like the Val yeah. Kilmer movie. That one, I haven't seen the Val Kilmer movie, so I'm not even going to sit and hate on it, okay. but some people are like, are you going to do it like the original show and the books? Or the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the books and the show. Awesome. All right, uh, uh, switching gears a little bit, I mean, um, one thing that uh, you're also really well uh, known for is, is your activist work, uh, particularly uh, work that you're doing in, in uh, northern Uganda. So do you want to uh, tell the folks here about some of the exciting stuff that you're, that you're working on there? Yeah, I mean, if you guys have been following me on Twitter or Facebook, I've put it right in your face a number of times. It, it is something that I love, and it's part of why I love what I do so much, is that I get to get people's attention and then trick them really fast. And, put attention on things that I think are really awesome. And uh, one of those is Thrive Gulu, my mother's nonprofit and, and my, um, and it's it was originally called Tharch Gulu. Some of you may have been surprised to see the name change, but it was a weird and funny name and nobody knew how to say it. Or they felt uncomfortable saying Tharch, and so now it's Thrive Gulu. And if you guys have donated, thank you very much. It's literally, there's the most, there have been the most amazing things going on. We were able to purchase a huge plot of land and build a center for uh, rehabilitation and uh, trauma healing for former child soldiers and victims of the Ugandan war and Joseph Kony and his rebel group. So we are planning some upcoming trips. We have a, a new website and some really cool stuff happening that you're all going to see and, on my website and, you know, be wowed by and continue to be involved and help me, you know, change the world, right? That's what we're here for. We like that. Because that's badass, right? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I think we probably have some people itching to ask some questions. I um, who's itching? Having having a look out here. Nice people here in Calgary. There's I have the, to say. Let's get a question from Tom. Nice, Baker pretty people. And, and the scarf there. Are you ready there, Tom? Well, I, I scarf I have. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, just what, what Darren Taylor was saying there. Absolutely true. Please give them buckets of money because education and the arts are under financial attack. Here in Alberta. Um, but that preaching aside, a uh, question for uh, you about Dollhouse. Um, you play more characters in that show than I have colors on my scarf right now. And I, I know as an actor that you want to prepare as much as possible for every single role that takes a lot of time, a lot of work. You have to do like six, seven different ones, all of them multifaceted. In, in one episode. So, how do you do the triage in that? And, uh, I mean, this is, I think I know the answer to this question, but is it intimidating? <laughs> well, you know, I asked for it full on. When I had lunch with Joss and we came up with the show, I had made the mistake of, you know, just telling Joss that I didn't want to do the same thing every week or wear the same thing. And he's kind of like an ironic and, you know, little fucker guy, so he was like, no, really, I'm gonna give you something. So I asked for it, hands down. And uh, it was challenging, as you, as you mentioned, because you do want to have as much time as possible to sort of incarnate these characters, and uh, we didn't have a lot of time when we were shooting the show at, at such a crazy pace. But I did the best I could. I had a couple of different coaches that I worked with. Um, two in particular, and that was helpful. We had an awesome script supervisor who was really helpful and reminded me who the hell I was whenever I had to be someone else. Um, and a really awesome uh, group of, it was just, you know, the team. The, the rest of the cast and the crew were spectacular. Joss was great. And when the writing is really good, it helps to, you know, keep you, um, if you, don't, you don't ever feel really threatened or unsure or as confused when the writing makes sense. So I, of course, attribute that guy Joss Whedon to that. So it was, it was a challenge, but it was pretty awesome. And I love your scarves. It's like Will Wheaton. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> okay, we have a uh, question. The spotlight. Yeah. We have a question way up in the, in the bleachers up oh. here. Hi, Eliza. Hi. Uh, as a lot of people know, Rick Fox is here as well this weekend. Is that something that happens often, or is it nice to get away? <laughs> One more time? Uh, He's right over there. Do you travel with Rick Fox often to these conventions? Or I do. Is it 
nice to just do it once in a while? Um, we do it a lot. We do. <laughs> a lot. I enjoy it. Hi, baby. Yeah, very proud of Is that it? <laughs> yes, thank you. Great. Hi. Hi. Speaking of complex Joss Whedon written characters, I'm sure most of us will agree that Faith is definitely one of the best due to all of her layers. What I wanted to know though is, um, in season four you did this year's Girl and Who Are You? And part of that was portraying Buffy herself. So what was your approach in, in coming to a character that Sarah Michelle Gellar had spent three and a half seasons perfecting already? Well, um, it was fun. I watched a few episodes. I think, I think Sarah actually, because she was really excited about it as well, and I think she chose a few episodes that she thought that I should watch to really get her, so I did. And um, I've always been kind of a good mimic, and it was just particularly exciting to get on set and have Tony Head and all the crew members like completely, you know, bug bug out that it was I, I was doing something right in their minds and uh, and then Sarah of course yeah I got to go and like be naughty and sleep with her boyfriend and you know and, and everyone always said she made me sound Canadian and she because apparently I'm Bostonian and I say about the way it sounds very Canadian I don't know she focused in on that and I think she said about like a number of times in the episode <laughs> It was cool though. It was definitely there was that trickster Joss again. <laughs> he was uh, shaking it up. It was fun. All right, I think we got another question over to the middle row. Hi, Eliza. Giles. Yeah, I remember that. That like kind of out of the side of my head. Hi. Hi. My question is: Out of all the roles you played. In the end, is it more fun to play the good girl or the bad girl? Hmm. Well, you know, it's, I mean, I, it is fun to play the bad girl. It is fun to get to torture someone with Pam cooking spray and a lighter for like seven hours and have him just scream. Um, I don't know why I enjoy that, but I do. I did. And uh, it, it was fun to get to, you know, do the scenes where you're like dead in the nightclub and all of a sudden you're beating everybody up. And you just, to play the bad girl and not have to face all the repercussions, you know, like jail that you would as a human, normal person, is, is very fun. But I mean, sometimes the grass is always greener. And you're playing a bad girl and you're looking at the good girl and you're like, oh, she's so cute and good. And then you're playing the good girl and you're like, this sucks. Let's go back and be the bad girl. Can I answer your question? Cool. But you want to play a good girl or a bad girl? Too much of a good girl. I want to play a bad girl. OK. We'll talk about it. Find me. Give me some tips. <laughs> Okay, it's got a set of horns in the back row there. <laughs> Hi, horns. Hello. <laughs> okay, so out of all the things that happened in like your career, what do you think is the weirdest thing that happened? <laughs> the weirdest thing in my entire career? Yeah, pretty much. She's been 22 years. God, yeah, that's right. Tell your friends. Um, it was 1990, by the way. You called it 1992. Well, got some, yeah. The IMDb's got some bad information. The weirdest. I don't know, man. I mean, I find weird stuff pretty cool. So things that are weird to me might not be weird to other people. But uh, I, I thought it was maybe not weird, but yeah, weird and cool that a couple people like proposed to their partners, their future wives at conventions in the last six months. I went to a convention and I had two proposals. Like one was during a Q&A like this. No pressure on you guys. <laughs> Sitting right next to your girlfriends. Um, and then another was at a photo op and dude just like had one on my right and one on my left and it was like a three, two, one and the dude just like hit his knee and the security almost grabbed him by the throat because they were like, fast movements! <laughs> 
but uh, he dropped right there and they snapped like right, it literally looked like a stage shot where the girl's face was like, oh, and he was like, oh. your boat, right? So, weird and cool. Does that work? Yeah, it's very funny. Nice. How'd you like that? Horny. <laughs> <laughs> Sassy girl. Okay. <laughs> Gentlemen over here. Hey there, hi. Um, hey I'm there. Hi. I'm not going to propose or anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't to me. Why is it? <laughs> started bringing on and Ron Turn, which both sort of spawn these sort of directed DVD series. Do you ever follow those movies? Oh, um, I'm an honest person, no. I've never seen the, the follow-ups, but I've heard some of them people dig. <laughs> yeah. I, bet, I see very few movies. They have to be really, like, shoved in my face or... You know, because I am a little ADHD, so focusing or on sitting down and watching movies is hard for me. I heard the one with Hayden Panettiere was, was good, we're bringing on. Yeah? You guys like that one? Yeah, no? Maybe. It's cool though. But they got to live on. Guys, <laughs> gentlemen of the red in the middle. Hi, Eliza. I have to say, you're probably my favorite Slayer from Buffy. Aww, you say that to all the Slayer. <laughs> anyway, uh, my question is, is that I love the things that Faith says, and one of the things I have a question about is that, why does Faith say, when she's asked how she is, like, why did she say five by five, and what does that mean to you?